Welcome to Power Up Gaming. This is our E3 wrap up for Bethesda's E3 conference this evening, which they revealed a lot of stuff. It looks like they have a pretty content heavy year coming up, whether you're a fan of Doom, Skyrim, Dishonored, Fallout, whatever. There is a lot going on with Bethesda, and we're going to talk about as much of it as we can in the next half an hour. So, Let's get going. We'll start off first with what we thought about the first reveal and Jamal's grand prediction for E3, which was a new Quake game. Fucking called it. You did? <laughs> <laughs> it, it, uh, it's crazy. Like I was I, I, as soon as as soon as like the fucking trailer dropped, I was like, oh my god, it's fucking Quake. And then like they were showing like the cinematic trailer, and I was like, "Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god!" And like you could see on on the site, it says like you know, you know, Quake Champions announced parentheses fuck yes, and then <laughs> <laughs> and then like uh, um, the guy comes out on stage and he's like, "Oh, it's only for PC," and I was just like, "No!" <laughs> 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 I mean, like you know, like I'm sure like PC PC guys are like you know totally like fuck it, whatever, man. This is P this is PC first. But I was like, man, like I really, I really do hope that they turn around and they bring out Quake on console at some point. It's kind of like when, um, when for I feel like they have to. Yeah. 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 Like when it was it for Axis that came out and said like XCOM Two is only on PC and then it's coming out in like September or whatever. Um. So yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm still fingers crossed. Like it might come out on console at some point. But uh, yeah. So I mean, like, it would be a good like, business decision to release it. I mean, uh, you know, yeah. why not? Exactly. Right? So. Yeah, and there's no reason there's no reason not to put it on console. Like it just like it doesn't even make any sense to do that anymore. Um, especially yeah. Yeah. consoles being so as capable as they are and the audiences on console and things like that. But uh Justin, like you're big into fucking Quake. So Yeah, yeah. How pumped were you yeah. saw that? Oh, I was fucking yeah. I I mean you saw my, my message. I was as soon as I saw just that Quake name come up like in like the DOS, you know. Uh, code or whatever. I was like, oh no, fucking way! Because I yes, I knew that yes, there was a yes. chance of it. I knew there was a chance of it, but I didn't think it would actually happen. So were uh, you able to watch the trailer um, after changing your pants, or did you just sit there? No, I it, still you had just sat in his phone fell. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> okay. yeah. I, I'm still sitting here. Yeah, Come on. <laughs> still. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I I so I played a, a ton of Quake Three. Um, like with friends, I, I played it on Dreamcast for a while. Which oh is, man, that's that's fucking... the only place I've ever played any Quake game was on Dreamcast. Um, and, no, I, I I played it on PC too. Uh, I, I wasn't that big of a PC player back in the day, but I I dabbled with like that and like fucking Delta Force for whatever reason. Uh, but oh, yeah, man, I am I am fucking pumped about this. I the gameplay. I mean, the only thing I'm worried about is the mentions of like abilities and classes that <laughs> has me worried because that's not quake right just like just like it sounds like it sounds to me like they're basically gonna make it like doom's multiplayer and i have i have a huge problem with that i i as and and as somebody who like thoroughly enjoys doom multiplayer we might talk about that in a little bit like i really hope that they don't do that like doom has its own thing where exactly. it has you know like loadouts it has you know sort of minimal map control design um but i mean i think like you know the mechanics and stuff are great but i mean that is its own beast i really hope that they don't do that with quake i hope that they stay as as faithful as to the quake franchise as they possibly can yeah. because like that is a very separate beast i mean like you know people were really bummed out about doom's multiplayer for good reason i talk about that in my review about like how there are certain areas that they kind of dropped the ball on but I, even though i still enjoy it yeah. um they really can't afford to do that here because quake is more revered as a classic multiplayer deathmatch shooter than doom is um yeah. so they they just can't they can't fuck this up they really can't do it mm -hmm. so i mean in august you know they're going to show off like more quake details along with like some of the other stuff um but like fingers crossed for like a console announcement you know fingers crossed like a proper quake reveal um or or like you know they're they're more faithful to the game than like you know we may be feeling a little bit anxious about but um i don't know my Who my knows? favorite part is when he says hello i am this person and you guys like esports so we've made quake 
all about esports. <laughs> that was my favorite That's, part. That surprises me too. I don't. I didn't picture Bethesda as a as a I guess a uh, publisher that would attempt to bring a game in with the esports like in mind. I figured they would just be more. I, I I don't think that's a good strategy for anyone. I think like if it happens, it happens. Right. It's great, but I don't think you should auto, like just launch it and be like esports. Unless yeah, yeah. unless you're sports. unless you're like <laughs> unless you're like hey here's Street Fighter. This is obviously gonna happen. So you know, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> well, they don't even Street Fighter doesn't even need to say because like you said, they already know it's going in right. that direction. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, I, I think. Like, uh, well, Jamal, you brought it up earlier uh, in the EA podcast with Evolve. Like, that was a big thing with Evolve is they oh, thought God, it was going to yeah. be huge on esports. And I was like, well, first, of, we'll just worry about making a good game exactly. that's not way overpriced. But, like, I guess, yeah, I guess you're right. Like, the choice by um, the choice by Bethesda to, to turn it into an esports thing first it just shows you, like, kind of the how the industry is now. You know what I mean? Like, the who is it? Uh, uh, Counter Strike's getting picked up by by some company or by some uh, a channel to be like broadcast now. So I think yeah. esports is such a big thing that they have to kind of like put it as an aside. Like, yeah, we're gonna probably make this e- esports focused, even though they don't necessarily have to. So hmm. I just yeah. Yeah, I mean, kind of like I'm gonna I'm gonna steal the words of Jeff Gersman and say like you know you can't like you don't get to make that call and say that your game is esports before it's even out. Right. Right. You know, like exactly. it's, like you, exactly. you can't you can't just fucking do that. And um, it's a community but, decision. Like even yeah, absolutely, even, absolutely. Even Blizzard didn't do that with Overwatch. I mean, it, they knew it was gonna happen. They put it into the hands of professional gamers for that reason, and it's taking off. But even they didn't come out with that like saying that. You know, uh, I just. I don't think it's a good strategy. I, th- I think it turns people off, and I think especially with something like Quake, that yes, it has a rich, like, competitive history. It's not like the professional. Like, it's not like it's not associated directly with esports as we know it today. Right. And, and it, it's another thing that kind of makes me worried about the direction that they're taking Quake, along with the class space and stuff like that. Hmm. Yeah. So, so, but, yeah. so there's some there's some pros and some cons that you're feeling a little a little bittersweet, but. Mostly, I thought it looked pretty good, and I think the general consensus will be that this was a pretty great announcement, especially, like, like you said, Justin, I, like, I'm not even a big fan of the game, but I love the way that they started it off with the DOS thing. Like, that was, that was pretty great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, moving on from Quake, we'll talk about Fallout real quick. There was some DLCs announced, which, you know, is nice. Um, it, you get to build a vault, which is lovely. Um, but what I want to talk about is fallout coming to vr okay yes please because as austin and i we were, we were talking during during the thing and austin said this is what you've been waiting for right like real games good games well, to come yeah, to vr I mean, none of this like, none of this tron disc throwing thing like that they showed at the psx in december like we're talking about a a triple a game coming to a, a vr platform so was that actually no, announced because i just i i yes. don't know if i was like typing up a news story okay so tell me i, I don't tell me more about that's that. that's pretty much all they said <laughs> yeah it was uh okay. who are they who are they partnering HTC, with though? was I it believe? the vibe they said yep. okay yeah because mm-hmm. he, here's the thing that i i was really excited about it because when i went to e3 last year I did get to play quite a bit of VR stuff on my last day, and the only big downfall to it was I was like, I want games that people know about, you know what I mean? And it was too new at that point to really expect that, but now that VR has pretty much been officially released in in, you know some companies, um, I I think it's about time we do get the big titles that are going to have it, and Fallout is absolutely like it, and it would... It, it would be it would be a shame not to have Fallout VR. You you even went you know as far I mean? as to say like title yeah, for that. That's what you said was this is the perfect game to have for VR. Yeah, I mean, and and there are other like good games. Obviously, for like if they did, if they had a Pokemon MMO out that was like open world like Fallout, I'd say you know that's the perfect title. Like I, I guess like there's many titles that could be perfect. I'm just sick of seeing like the. This is a generic like dungeon crawler. This yeah. is a generic like target shooting game. Like no, I want like the real developers. Uh, partnering with a VR company and making like a really like a nice experience. Like I think uh, Adam and his VR 
article one time had mentioned that they had like the alien surgeon simulator if you guys anyone remembers mm-hmm. that game yep. so that's like a, a an existing game and he actually really liked it but again it's like kind of a it's kind of a smaller game i want big titles with vr now mm-hmm. and i want it I, I, well hopefully i want it to work well you know what I, you know what i mean i i just don't know if uh the bigger titles will will be able to work or if it'll be able to capture the same kind of magic but, but when i saw that i was very excited yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I just just pulled up a new story on it. So, like, I mean, that that's super rad. Like, thus far, it's only announced for HTC Vive. Um, but, right. like, the thing that we've seen of VR thus far for, like, the past couple of years that it's been sort of, like, drumming up is it's, like, these, like, on-rails, like, short vignette experiences of, like, you know, as you said, awesome, like, unknown games. So, like, that might Correct. have a little bit of trouble, like, gaining traction. And the instant that like vr was talked about we were thinking about things like oh well what if you have a game like half-life what if you have a game like skyrim and things like that exactly this is, we all this had is games it. in mind yeah. yeah and and this is that announcement um it's only announced for htc vive um like just i have the same hopes that i uh that i have for this game as i have for quake like i think that this is going to come to oculus i think this is going to come to playstation vr um, you know, and with fingers crossed with, uh, you know, Justin's, uh, prediction on our, on our last cast where, you know, maybe Oculus would come to Xbox. Um, like, yeah, I'm hoping that like as many platforms as possible has access to this mod because I mean, fall is such a huge game. It would be stupid for Bethesda just to sort of pigeonhole it in HTC Vive, the most expensive fucking VR headset and probably <laughs> yeah. has like the least <laughs> units out there. Like that just does not make any sense. Like it is definitely yeah. gonna come on like other platforms. So. Completely agree. And uh, to me, this is exciting because I've, I've talked a lot about how I am not on the VR hype train at all. Okay. And a lot of it has to do with the games that we've seen. You know, here, drive this little tank. You know, here, be an eagle. Like, I don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Hit things with your face. Right? Eagle. Like, what, what, eagle. What, was, what was that one? Was there, like, the like a, they showed up the PSX. It was, like, a day in the life of a zombie sim or something like that. I can't remember what it was. <laughs> but, like, I'm like. It's just all these, like, half-baked ideas right. that VR slapped on, essentially. Right. And they get away with it because, hey, VR. It, it reminds me of when I first got my PS4, and I'm like, well, what the freak do I play? <laughs> like, <laughs> here, Dust and Elysian Tales free this month. I'll play that, <laughs> right? Hey, 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 good, come on. It was a good game. You know, we, had, but... <laughs> uh, solid game. we had Infamous. Uh, what was that? What, what Infamous game was that? The Second Son, yeah. But it was like, you yeah, know, Second Son. now Bethesda's opened up the possibility of getting, you know, real games, and, and that's exciting for the the people and you know even people like me who aren't really interested in vr i want to see what that looks like i want to try yes. that so um another big and terribly kept secret from uh from bethesda uh skyrim yeah coming to current gen consoles yeah. right who the thunk it uh <laughs> with mods <laughs> which is fun yeah, but uh, I wanted to say this. Okay, I made a character in Skyrim once. That was pretty good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'll have more to say tomorrow night. I promise. <laughs> but uh, I, I thought that the changes, especially in colorization and lighting and things like that, that they showed. You know, they did the PS3 and then they did the wipe to the PS4, right? Um, I thought it was pretty drastic changes, to be honest with you. Like. It's, it's more of an update than we've seen from other, you know, quote-unquote HD remasters, which really don't need to happen, if that makes sense. Yeah. You know, it, yeah. it, it looked like a very different and much more detailed and, and vivid game. Um, and I thought that was nice because it, it doesn't seem just like a, a cheap cash grab. It seems like, hey, we have this masterpiece. You know, people spend thousands of hours playing Skyrim and now they're bringing it to us once more in a in a way that shows that they care about the game and they care about what the players and the fans think about this remaster that's the feeling that I got from just the short snippets that they showed 
correct. Yeah, I mean, that's interesting that you say that because um, when Fallout 4 was announced and a lot of people kind of came out and said, oh, like, this game looks a lot like Fallout 3 in New Vegas. Right. Like, it doesn't seem as if it got that big of a visual jump. But I think right. the, you know, just the value of having it juxtaposed next to the PS3 and Xbox 360 versions and you can sort of see the difference between the two. Now, it could be that they smartly cut the trailer like that um, and not just showed Skyrim on its own because I think that maybe if they showed Skyrim like the remastered version, like you might have just been like, oh, this is exactly how I remembered it. So it might be just <laughs> like true. some visual, it might be some visual trickery there um, because I yeah. remember like way back yeah. when they did that with uh, Call of Duty Ghosts and how they were like, hey, look how much better this looks. Right. And it's just like, uh, n- no, not really. But um, I don't know. I mean, like, like, you know, visuals aside, I think that bringing a game like Skyrim, I think Skyrim could get away with a remaster because it's such a massive fucking game. Like, there's so many different ways to play. Mm-hmm. Like, I played it where I just, like, abused the shit out of the Augment Phenom glitch where you just, like, level up your character to infinity or whatever. Um, but I think, like, you know, going back into this with, like, a different class, you know, making different choices and all that other stuff, and there's so much different ways that you could play it, I think that it's, it's worth picking up uh, Skyrim again for a lot of people. A lot of people are going to take advantage of the mods, though, too. Like, there's, yeah. Yeah. I, I think that I, I'm interested to see how this, the whole mods thing plays out on consoles. Um, but I know, like, that's one of the reasons that, and I, I, I still have yet to play, play Skyrim, uh, which I know is a sin. But uh, I, well, I'm sending it over here too, Pat. Me too. So I, uh, <laughs> yeah, we're all goddamn sinners. Um, I. <laughs> I think I think that'll be successful though because if you if anyone's followed Skyrim on PC at all, like mods have been like that's what that game is now. Yeah, right? it's 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 made for modding at this point, sold for modding. That's what any all, PC all game things. turns into, yeah. Yeah, well, especially one this big that has like this long. It's just it's amazing how long of a life that game has had on PC because of the mods and like to think that that basically could could serve as a way to completely refresh this interest on consoles for Skyrim. Uh, not that I wouldn't have enough already, but yeah, I think it's a. I think that's gonna be a great move by them. I just always find it funny when when they come out with remasters, and I mean I'm a diehard console player, but I, I just invested in a PC like uh, a year and a half ago, and I just always imagine PC players watching these conferences like fucking idiots. Yeah. You had to wait a year and a half. For <laughs> it still doesn't look as good as it did when I first got it. Yeah, yeah. I, I watched so it. I, I, I watched it, and that's the, the could, only, that's what I thought. I was like, okay, yeah, we're, we're getting Skyrim the PC version or the PC uh, <laughs> like update or whatever on consoles. Yeah, the the, the two thousand and four or thirteen like edition of of Skyrim. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I, I don't, I'm with you, Justin. I, I I I mean, I might be putting some words in your mouth here, but I I really don't care about the graphical updates at all. It's the mods that yeah. that really breathe life into the game more so than what even the developers can do and that that's the important part about the pc gaming and for that to come to consoles is uh, it's it's never going to be as as big as the mods that you'll get you know the amount of mods you'll get on pc right. but it's at least a step in the right direction i remember when they did it with minecraft and at least it was it was something a step in the right direction yeah. all right well let's move on because we've still got a lot to talk about and not very much time to do so we have no couple things pray <laughs> and uh, Dishonored 2 that I feel like we should go over there. Is there anything else that we need to talk about before we move on to those? Uh, uh, not much. No. Like, Doom might get better. <laughs> Doom, Doom uh, might wait improve. A, wait a minute. Austin says maybe. You know maybe. what, guys? We need to talk about Elder Scrolls Legends. <laughs> So that's happening. <laughs> Moving on to Prey. <laughs> legends. Here's a game coming to iPad. Wait, wait can Congre- we talk about how how the uh, screen messed up during the uh, Elder Scrolls? Did you guys legends? did you guys get that too? <laughs> yeah. Like I thought this is what I said to Austin. I thought they were going all full end of PT, where the game crashes and then you start back again at the beginning. And then I was like, I had I was sitting in the room with the lights off. I was like afraid to turn around. <laughs> because <laughs> we all know how that turned out last time it was but. like it was just such a who cares game that i don't even think most people even noticed they're it. like it well like, oh okay elder yeah. scroll of legends and then it's it like, crapped out and like yeah let's just move on to the next game Every, everybody pulled out their phones when that happened <laughs> yeah like, just like okay well, <laughs> <laughs> and they were just praying that that trailer would uh end so uh with that in mind pray too 
though. That was that well, was that was well, a, that wait was a, a minute, uh, Justin. Tell him that this is not a prey two. That's right. This is not a prey. Two. Right. This Sorry, not prey two. It's prey zero. <laughs> <laughs> No, yeah, tell us, tell us about prey. The, the reboot. Shout out, shout out to Adam for calling this one. Yeah, yeah, he did. Oh, really? He did. Yeah. Oh, did he call it for for a reboot? Uh, he said that like the prey two um trademark had been uh had been filed, so he was like, gotcha. yeah, he's pretty sure that, that was gonna come out. So yeah, props gotcha. to him. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Um, this actually looks interesting. I, the, and I, I I've seen footage of Prey 2, uh, the old demo that they showed. It looks nothing like that, from what I could tell. Uh, it looks much more like the first, like the actual the first Prey game, where um, the, the protagonist is trying to basically he's he's a he was part of an experiment that looked as though it was going wrong. It did not look like it was going well for him, although we don't know the effects of it. Uh, but uh, and then of course the his space station is overrun by um, some sort of alien beings and it basically looks like a psychological horror which sounds awesome. I'm always down for yeah. psychological horror. Um, yeah, me but, too. Like, seeing stuff. Oh, yeah. Sorry. yeah, JD's all about that horror. Um, was that was that him at the end of the trailer, kind of talking to himself and saying that he had bad news or something? Yeah, and that's that's the whole, that's like the biggest that was freaky. mind fuck of it all, right? Like it's. I saw that because I thought I was following along with it pretty easily, and I obviously like I was debating as as they were showing like the I don't want to call it gameplay gameplay footage because that did not look like gameplay to me. Yeah, it was all CG. Like yeah, but um, obviously they're hinting at gameplay, right? But as they were showing that stuff, I was trying to figure out exactly what was going on in the beginning, and then they got to the end, and I was like, okay, I don't fucking know. I don't. <laughs> there's no telling. Um, but it did look interesting. Like it, it has my interest. I definitely want to see what kind of story it has. If this is just him crazy the whole time, and by the end of the game, I'm gonna be pissed. <laughs> it's like Shutter Island, the game. Yeah. I was just gonna say that. Yeah, yeah. Man, I like Shutter Island. I, I, that's uh, that's one of my favorite horror movies. <laughs> Out of all two that you've seen, <laughs> I've seen. That's okay. This is a conversation for another time. I've seen about five <laughs> horror movies. Just so, but go see it. Follow one of them was I Ernest. I, that's one I've seen. There you go, buddy. <laughs> Nice. Yeah. Um, I never played Prey, but I can't really appreciate it as much as those that have. But um, that game, like, the concept looks, like, really fucking rad. Like, I really yeah. want to play this game. So that's all I got to say about it. So <laughs> the the biggest portion of Bethesda's conference, I think, like, almost half of the conference was dedicated to giving a lot of gameplay and a lot of information about Dishonored, um, spelled incorrectly. Yes. Um, so can we summarize everything that was said in oy, oy, oy. seven to eight minutes is yeah, the I real mean, challenge. That's what took me so long to get on the chat because I was just tr trying to get all the little details, um, on the, on the trailer into like, you know, one like somewhat meaty news story. Um, yeah. So, I mean, Dishonored 2 is set in this new place called, um, ba -ba 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 -ba. I can't get the name real quick, but well, yeah, yeah. Kirkana or something like that. Yeah. Um, they're using the void engine, if that means anything, but it does look, it does preserve like the look and feel from the original Dishonored game into this one. Everything looks cleaner and sharper and all that good stuff. Um, so they opened it as em Emily Caldwin, who was the Empress's daughter in the last game. And we kind of talked a lot about this stuff already when they had revealed um, Dishonored 2 in last year's conference. And um, you get to see Corvo for the first time face to face. And you, well, yeah. you did get like in some concept art, you did see what Corvo looked like. But then you actually get to see him and talk to him. He was a silent protagonist in the last game. Um, but they showed off some really cool gameplay elements, uh, like they showed Emily using the uh, the the far reach uh, ability, where it's sort of like a Corvo's blink ability. Or there was um, there's another assassin that you play in the, the DLC for the original Dishonor that has something like that. So she can you know like basically teleport from place to place, and there's a little bit more verticality in this game. Uh, there was like a sandstorm that you know got kicked up, and it immediately threw me back to MGS5. Um, so there's that. Uh, da, 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 da. What else? I mean, they showed her Shadow Walk, which is in the CG trail that they showed last year. Um, you know, she's got like, you know, new abilities, like one called Mesmerize and all this other stuff. And yeah. then they showed 
uh, this bit where she had, uh, it was kind of like in the second half of the gameplay trailer where she went to like this area where she couldn't use her powers, but she had like this item which immediately harkened back to the heart from Dishonored 1, um, which the heart, if uh, for those who haven't played it, it was this device that you could pull out and if you point it at somebody or something, it sort of gives you a little bit of details on it, which is interesting. Um, but in this one, it sort of allows her to look through the lens of time and she could tra it's like like travel through time back and forth, which is really cool. I could talk uh, about that fucking thing alone for like 30 minutes. That yeah, game, yeah, that, that's ahead. like one of the coolest gameplay implementations, or at least like in theory. Obviously, we'll see how it plays out. But the way it did looks that like remind it anyone of like Prince of Persia? Not, not too much. Really? Although, like, I think oh god, which Prince of Persia was it? I think it was like the last last one, or maybe the. Yeah, the last, not the cell shaded one, but there was like another one that was sort of like a, a slight return to form. I think that Prince of Persia game, like it kind of reminds me of that now that you bring it up. Yeah. Any anytime there's like time bending, time manipulation elements, I always I always go back to that game for some reason. I, yeah. I don't know why. I I really do hope because they sort of only showed it within the context of this particular level with this particular puzzle. I hope that this is something, which I'm sure that Justin, you'd hope the same thing too. That this is something that you could use in like multiple areas. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I Which, mean, what did what did the rest of you guys or you th thought about Dishonored? Did you guys play the first Dishonored? Never played I, the first Dishonored. I, I've only seen gameplay and heard things uh, and heard positive uh, feedback from it, or not feedback, but positive thoughts on it. But yeah, uh, yeah. I I don't know. I like like Dallin said. It just kind of surprised me how much they showed of it. They had a, it ton, a lot. ton of stuff to showcase on that, and I didn't mind it. It made it actually got me interested in the game. Uh, I was already interested in Dishonored, um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. It looked to me to me it looks just like an Assassin's Creed type game that I I'd be personally more interested to play. That's how I view the game. Yeah. I don't. I'm not that interested it's, to play Assassin's Creed. This has me interested. They, it's it's funny. It's it's always interesting to hear people talk about Dishonored who hadn't played it because. It seems like, I imagine at least, from an outside perspective, they're making a big deal out of this game that not, not a whole whole lot of people played, it seems like. like it, this wasn't one that like people flocked to, right? And all of a sudden, the sequel's yeah. getting attention as though it's like like their their big thing at the moment. Um, as but, though everyone had always played it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, for me, I love the first Dishonored. It's one of the few games that I actually got the 1000G gamer score on Xbox. That's, so like that's a platinum, platinum trophy price. for everyone yeah. who is uh, yeah. of, a, of a lesser status. Sorry, continue. Yeah, okay. yeah, exactly. I do wish it was something cool like like called like platinum. Uh, but anyway, I uh, I went through basically. I started playing the game. I got like two or three levels. Like I think like two levels in, and I was like I was really liking it. And what I decided to do was basically play each level twice, and in doing nice. so, I would play it the first time where I would just play it normally, try to get certain achievements as I was going along. But then wait for chaos to like kind of take off, like where I fucked up somehow during my stealth, and then just keep going throughout my run, right? Just just play it through, yeah. and then the second time, learn from my mistakes in the first one, and then do a perfectly perfect stealth run. And so I was doing that like literally with each level. I fucking love that game. Uh, that's it is the only game in my opinion that that gets first person stealth correct. I think after playing that, Wolfenstein was so yeah. disappointing with the stealth elements. Mm. Um, but I, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to this game a lot. Whole, I, I, knew, I knew it was going to be a big deal for them. I didn't know it was going to be this big of a deal for them, which I'm pretty happy to see. Uh, I was pleased that they spent so much time talking about it. But like some of the new abilities, that whole the time function that you're talking about with the with the gadget, where she can like see into the past and into the future. Like my only concern as of right now is that it makes the stealth look almost too easy uh, because she could basically like flash to the present. And then kill someone like literally face to face, no problem. And granted, you it, there's gonna be more more difficult more difficulty to that depending on how many people are around and stuff like that. But that looked really easy. And then the the shadow ability looked like she was basically invincible and in killing people. Uh, and then she could like the, there was that one ability where she like, like linked multiple people, like three or four people at a time. And if she killed one, all four of them died. It just seemed to it seemed to make the stealth perhaps a little too easy. But I'm sure they'll find a way. Uh, They'll find a way to, to, to make it all work because that combat in the first Dishonored, I don't know if you guys have seen uh, footage of people who are skilled yeah. at that game. Like they straight are, chaos version? They're, yeah, they're fucking like Darth Vader's. It, it's incredible, yeah. 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 I watched one video of a guy, he he went to an area, there was like six guys, and he's taking them out one, one by one. 
before he started it, he launched something. He launched uh, one of the air, like an arrow into the air, killed five of them, and then turned around to look at the sixth one, and the arrow came down and landed in the dude's head. <laughs> I think Christ. I've seen That's that like exact. I think I've seen version. that exact thing Holy actually. Now that you mentioned that, incredible. Yeah. yeah. So if they can, if they do that, if they just keep like, if they keep that similar combat, maybe make it a little more fluid. Uh, I'm gonna love that game. I'm. Uh, this is probably. This is probably the game that I'm looking forward to the most as of right now, hmm. I would yeah. say, for this year. I think it's going to take a lot more for you to get, like, the quote-unquote, like, 1,000 Gs or Platinum or whichever console that you played on in this game because uh, I kind of talked about this the last, like, last year when we recorded. So I played it through it twice um, to, like, straight chaos and straight stealth. So I kind of get nice. an idea of, like, you know, what, like, as soon as I got to feel the combat, I'm like, holy shit, I have to go back and, and like, play this in just straight chaos. But, yeah. um, you know, like I had said last year, um, you could play as Corvo and Emily, and then it's kind of like imagine playing as Corvo and El Emily, and then in both with both characters because they have different abilities, you can play as Chaos or straight stealth for both of them. So essentially, yeah. it's almost like four playthroughs for like this one game. I like remember, that's I remember you saying yeah. that last year. Yeah. Yeah, that's insane. Like I really, really like kind of look forward to to having those options for this game. But yeah. yeah. Hmm. So from one conference today that talked a lot but showed nothing to another one that talked very little and showed a lot. I think Bethesda's conference was uh, a definite win today. They showed a lot of things that were exciting and a couple of minor things here and there that didn't really matter. But in the end, I think that, uh, uh, I think that yeah. they, they definitely uh, came out on top so far. Yeah, easily the better conference. At the very ever. least, yeah. Yep. There, was, there was a little something for everyone, and then there was a lot for... For a good number of people, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, make sure to stay tuned. Uh, E3 Day 2 slash still not even technically the beginning of E3 is tomorrow. Uh, we got Microsoft. <laughs> we got Ubisoft. We got Final Fantasy 15, a full hour or more of that. We got Sony. We got lots of stuff coming up. So make sure to uh, stay tuned and catch all of our post-E3 conference reactions and opinions as they as they come.